This is a quick demonstration of how to set up your traps before you place them in the water. When you get to your site, you're gonna to wanna to put the bait in the bait cups. You're using approximately one herring broken into a couple of chunks in each cup. After you cut your herring, definitely make sure you rinse your knife, otherwise it will become very gross very quickly. And once you get home, it's also good to do a freshwater rinse on this. The bait cup will get put in your minnow trap just loosely. It doesn't have to attach to anything. On one side of your trap, you have a hook and loop system, and the other side should have a piece of rock cord attached to it. So the hook and loop feeds into each other, so it takes a little bit of fiddling to line them up. And then on the other side, there should be a piece of rock cord that you can use to tie just a simple bow. You don't want to double knot this. It gets really tough to get undone later on. And the other thing you should double check that your trap has is a clip in case you're using a rope you need to be able to hook onto it and then it should also have a trap tag that describes who is trapping, how to contact them and it should say green crab research on one side. The second trap type we use in this program is the folding prawn trap. Once you've got your cup baited you can secure it anywhere along the top mesh. This trap should also have a snap hook on it with a identification tag. Each prawn trap should have four pieces of rock cord attached to it. Um, you want to make sure that they're secure so that you can reuse this rock cord and it's not being lost. The purpose of the rock cord is that if the trap is accidentally lost, it will eventually open and release any species that have been caught inside. After you have the four pieces on, you're going to hook it through the top section. I like to hook all four through first before I tie them down because they're a little harder to reach once you start securing the trap completely. Something else I like to do is tie a small knot in the rock cord. This helps prevent it from unraveling. If you find that there are large gaps in the prawn trap side, you can definitely put more than four. If you're using the prawn traps in an area where you're worried about catching either larger crabs or some sort of mammal species such as mink, then it might be a good idea to use zap straps to make the entrances slightly smaller. How we do that is we secure them in an X pattern. So we're just going to feed through the netting on either side. Secure that, it doesn't have to be too tight. If you go too tight, you'll start to bend the entrance hole. And then we'll do a second one. And this just helps to reduce that potential for harming a terrestrial species. The minnow traps with the slightly smaller entrances don't seem to catch European green crab. As a result, we have begun modifying the tops of these smaller entrances and going forward we're purchasing the minnow traps that have the slightly larger 2 inch hole size. In order to modify these minnow traps with the standard 1 inch entrances, there are two options. Um, one is to use tin snips and you'll make four cuts, basically an X or a cross pattern here. And then this can be bent open to make the whole size slightly larger. You can cut off these extra pieces or just fold them back. Kind of the most important thing is to ensure that they're not really pokey and you're not going to accidentally injure a fish or something going into the trap. A secondary option you can use is a washer that is helpful for making the whole size a little bit more standard. So if you want to use the washer, then you'll just use the fold down method where the pieces that have been cut will just fold over to hold that washer in place. So you might have to fiddle around a little bit with how deeply you're making those cuts. How to set your traps. There are two possibilities. You can use these L-shaped stakes. These are really good for soft sediment bottoms and areas where there is really low current and you're not worried about the traps being carried away. The second option is to use a leaded line. So this line does not float, it'll sink to the bottom. It has these markers every 10 meters so you know where to set your traps. And it has two buoys on the end that'll be labeled with Green Crab Research and the name and phone number for your group. The rope is really useful for trapping in areas where it's a little bit of a rockier bottom or if you have that heavy current you're worried about. So when you're ready to deploy your traps, you should go out at low tide so you know that your traps are always underwater. 
When you're setting your stakes with the minnow trap, you're going to want to go in on an angle into the sediment as far as you can so that it's secured into the top. If it's a little bit rocky and you're having a hard time, you may have to move the trap around slightly until you find the appropriate area. After you set your trap, you're going to want to pace out approximately 10 meters or 10 large steps to your next location. When you're ready to secure your prawn trap, you'll secure the stake going straight down if it's possible. If the sediment is too hard, you may have to go on a bit of an angle, but ideally you want to sink the stake down so that it goes all the way into the top of the netting. Your rope may take a little bit of detangling. Lay the rope out across the beach in a straight line just to make sure all of your knots are out, and then you can carry the rope out into the water to secure your traps to it. You'll use the snap hook to hook on one trap at each of the orange markers. These are spaced 10 meters apart, so you have the appropriate spacing ready. Just make sure that you're alternating between the minnow trap and the prawn traps. So once you get to that second marker, you'll use the snap hook to hook on just before the orange marker and place your trap. The prawn traps and minnow traps are usually placed in any orientation. The exception is if there is some sort of current and vegetation, you may want to turn the trap so that it is perpendicular to the current. That way all the vegetation isn't getting pushed in through the entrances. And then you'll continue this alternating pattern. If you're in a high current area, you may want to add a weight to the line. If you're going to do this, the weight should be right next to the trap. You can use multiple weights along or you can put rocks in the traps so if that helps weigh them down as well. That way you have this extra slack with the buoy on the end that can raise with the tide and it's not being held down. If you put the weight too close to the end, the buoy will be held underwater. A third option you can use for securing your traps is to tie Ganjin to something sturdy, a tree or a large boulder on the shoreline and then run the line out to your trap and secure it to your trap. This is useful if you're in an area where it's too rocky to use the stakes and you're worried about eelgrass with the rope. You should use a clove hitch for this. After that is pulled tight, you can do a half hitch to secure it. After you've set your traps, you want to record what the site name is, uh, GPS location, and the date and time that they were set in the water.